The Olympic Games, the pinnacle of sporting endeavour, creating legends since 1896, who passed the baton of success down the generations. Tokyo had the honour in 1964. Now, 57 years on, much in the world has changed, but the Olympic ideal continues. The coronavirus pandemic has meant a 12-month delay, so now, five years on from Rio, the eyes of the world are on Japan. Questions about if and how the Games are delivered remain. 11,000 athletes are due to compete in Tokyo, all with different motivations and ambitions. Many dreams will be broken, but for those who peak at exactly the right moment, sporting immortality awaits. Their medals and records etched in the history books for all to see. Take four athletes, all heading to their first Olympics, who truly embody the spirit of the Games. The skateboarder, an artist who never dreamt the Olympics would be her calling. The windsurfer, brought up by an Olympic mother, now aiming to sail into the record books. The karateka, Azerbaijan's golden girl, who combines strength and grace with a winning mentality. And the surfer, a teenager obsessed with the waves and ready to showcase her sport to the world. Four athletes, one common goal, to take home Olympic gold. These are the new faces of the Games. Irina Zaretska was born in Ukraine, but the 25-year-old world champion now represents Azerbaijan. With karate a new sport on the Olympic schedule, she's ready to make the most of her opportunity. You know, some people telling that uh very important things in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part. But it's not for me. <laughs> I have a very big ambition and of course I want gold. So I will do everything possible and impossible to get it. Alexis Sablone grew up in Connecticut, something of a one-off, a young female skateboarder mixing it with the boys. Back then there was no prospect of an Olympic place. Skateboarding will also be a new sport in Tokyo. Honestly, if you had asked me when I was little, I would have said, no, like, that's not for skateboarding. Skateboarding's, because skateboarding is just, has always felt to me like something really, like, different than a sport. Fellow American Caroline Marks burst onto the World Surf League, winning Rookie of the Year in 2018. A year later, she was the overall runner-up, and she's still just 19. I just love surfing so much. Like I just, like I said, like I go to bed thinking about surfing, I wake up thinking about surfing. Um, you know, even the days we don't have to surf or don't have to practice, like I just want to go in the ocean. The ocean is so therapeutic to me. Emma Wilson is following in her mother Penny's footsteps, windsurfing for Great Britain at the Olympic Games. Can the former world junior champion now bring home a gold medal? You feel like you're flying on the water, but you're not. And uh, the board is like lit up and yeah, just you're on the edge, but you're in control. And that's the best feeling, I think, in windsurfing. For millions of young sportsmen and women growing up all over the world, representing one's country at the Olympic Games is the ultimate aim. Often just one chance to attain perfection on a given moment in time. One false start or loss of concentration can mean the end of that dream. Caroline Marks, she's proud to be among the first group of surfers to compete at the Olympics. I think all the surfers are really appreciative of surfing in the Olympics. You know, I think we deserve that level of professionalism. And, you know, we all work super hard and um, into our training and our fitness and nutrition and things like that. So I think it definitely deserves to be on that level. And yeah, it's incredible to be, be a part of that movement and to, um, to be, you know, one of the first surfers ever in the Olympics, which is so incredible. You know, it's something no one can ever take away from you. And, um, yeah, it's seriously such an honor. I've always been a huge fan of Simone Biles. I think she's super cool. And um, I think the last Summer Olympics, I was only 13 or 14. So I was still pretty young and um, pretty much just kind of watching surf videos because all I really care about is surfing. The karate in the Olympic, uh, you know, it's the first time and maybe the last time uh, when the karate in the Olympic program. So for me right now, it's uh, when I'm being in my peak of career, it's a very pure luck and I couldn't be happier about it. Karate, in general, is very beautiful martial art, I think, and it's mix of traditional Japanese philosophy with dynamic movements, perfect timing, and minimal contact. So 
in any case, I think it will be very interesting for the audience. Sablone will be one of the more experienced debutants at the Games. Now 34, she's been riding competitively since she was a teenager. I think it's kind of fitting. It's like this is, you know, I get one shot. It's going to be the first time for skateboarding and I've been doing it for this long and, and I've seen it change so much and it would be great to, to get to end the competitive part of skateboarding for me with this. Like it doesn't get much bigger than this, you know. When uh, Kelly Holmes won in 2004, I was pretty young. I must have been five. <laughs> Mum told us she, we never were really like watching TV at home because we were always like outside. She wanted to keep us outside. Anyway, she said we have an Olympic TV license, not a normal one. I just knew she had a bit longer shorts than all the other girls, like was in longer shorts and watching her win. And like, I think I just see how happy she was for the TV. And from then on, like every time I'd win a race, I'd be like, oh yeah. <laughs> for me, putting everything together on uh, six days we race, I think I could get a medal if I do that. I think just embracing it as well, enjoying the opportunity. Like not many people get to go to an Olympics and that's one thing my mum said to me as well, just make sure you enjoy it because uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to be going. Tokyo 2020 will feature 33 different sports with the addition of karate, surfing, sport climbing and skateboarding to appeal to a younger audience. Their experience will be a different one to previous Olympics. Athletes will have to adhere to the COVID protocols and may not be able to gather as before and make new friends. The safety of all concerned is the highest priority, but when the action starts, it will be medals on their mind. Emma Wilson will be windsurfing in Enoshima, around an hour's drive south of Tokyo. It's a place she knows well. Finishing fourth in a test event there secured her spot on Team GB. Yeah, I spent uh, like the whole of 2019 summer in Enoshima in Japan, and it was amazing. Like, um, obviously the weather's really nice; it's hot and sunny, but also like the people were so welcoming. We have three races a day, um, and each race is about 20, 25 minutes and uh, normally we're at max heart rate for most of that and then you have normally 10 minutes in between each race on a day and then you go again it's tricky like it depends again on the wind condition if it's like a just a nice sea breeze like very constant wind obviously it's there's less opportunities in the wind to catch up and it's more about speed if it's like all over the place like storms or big waves then uh, it's easier to catch up and tactically you can position yourself on the fleet so you give yourself more risk or less risk. Um, there's quite a lot to think about. Japan's really special. I've been there a couple times. Um, went to Miyazaki in 2019 for the ISA Games, and I actually had so much fun at that event. That was really cool. I think serving such an individual sport, and we kind of had like a team vibe there. We were down there all day supporting one another and rooting one another on, which was really different and cool, and um, I really enjoyed that. So I'm excited to spend a little bit more time in Tokyo, and. Um, should be awesome, and the waves are fun, so it'll be a good time for sure. Oh yeah, to win the first Olympic gold medal in surfing is massive. I think it's, you know, as big as it gets, as exciting as it gets, and that's something no one can ever take away from you because it's the first time it's ever going to be in the Olympics. It's history, you know, it's so incredible, so that would be massive, and um, yeah, it gives me the chills thinking about it, so that's exciting for sure. Irina Zaretska knows that with karate not on the Olympic schedule for Paris 2024, Tokyo represents her best chance of fulfilling a childhood dream. Of course I think about it. <laughs> and I'm doing a lot for to get it, not just thinking and dreaming. I know, I don't know, when you're telling me about this, I, you know, this feeling on my body and I'm starting like a cry. <laughs> for me, it's a main goal in my sports career and it's recognizable in any athletes and any sports and every people. On this chapter of my life and this uh, road to the Olympic, it's maybe one time in my life. <laughs> so I, I decided to create my YouTube channel and just filming all this way because you know, the people don't know whole story of these champions. They know only uh, on the competition, on the podium, and they think that it's very easy. But I share all of um, my way with the audience and uh, I want to be a little bit closer to my viewers 
and maybe they will be support me more and give me more power in the Olympic Games. When I started skating, I feel like it wasn't cool, you know, it was like for like punks and kids that didn't fit in and and that's like what's beautiful about it too, you know, and I think, I mean, I think in reality it still will be that and I really hope it still will be that too. The Olympics does feel like this like like it's like a point of no return and maybe it's already reached that but it's just I feel like it's skateboarding will look dramatically different possibly there's a different motivation to start skateboarding it gives it this different kind of status you know it felt like an opportunity for me basically and for women in skateboarding I think it's been like a really in, in a lot of ways a really positive thing I think it's given us way more like visibility there's going to be a world stage and there's going to be men and women on it with skateboards. Suddenly everyone started to care more. We can't be ignored now. Every Olympic journey begins with a child's dream that one day they can challenge the world's elite and come away with a medal or a personal best. How a child is introduced to a sport can vary worldwide and can shape their whole lives. There are many examples of talented teenagers who don't fulfil their potential, so taking one's opportunities is crucial and that journey often starts at a very young age. It's funny because I actually used to like horseback ride and not even surf really. You know, I got into surfing because of my older brothers and I just really wanted to impress them and for them to think that I was cool. And, you know, I caught my first wave when I, when I was like three, like super young. Around the age of eight, I just really wanted to be just like my brothers and just want them to think I was cool so bad. So I was like, okay, well, they think surfing's cool, so I got to surf and I got to become really good at it. And I think when I realized this is what I want to do for the rest of my life is... I was at USA Champs at Lowers and um, won the U12 girls and I, I kind of went in that event really oblivious and then I ended up winning and I was like, oh, I must be pretty all right at this and, um, you know, I, I got a big trophy and I got sponsors and all this attention and I just became addicted to the feeling and I just love surfing so much and I was like, I can't believe I didn't do this sooner <laughs> and um, that's kind of how it all started, so. You know, when I was 10 in like the mid-90s in a small town in Connecticut, it was like, I was the only one in my town that even skateboarded. And when you saw like the tiniest clue, like if you saw someone with certain shoes on, you knew for a fact that was a skateboarder. You know, it was exciting to see another one because it felt so like, it felt like rare. I had studied architecture, but had no desire to work at an architecture firm. And, you know, I just didn't want to go straight from the structure of school into more stru the structure of that type of job that had the same hours every day. And so I was like working at a restaurant the the restaurant I worked at we had like there was a kitchen fire and so no one got hurt but it was closed for like a couple months and it coincided with this skateboard competition where you could win a lot of money and I did that and that kind of just sent me into like a a different path of like okay there's a way to skateboard which I'm already doing and make money if I win competitions and then that frees me up to like make stuff and do other creative projects and stuff like that. Emma Wilson has lived almost her whole life by the water. Her mother Penny was a three-time world windsurfing champion and a two-time Olympian, but it was the sibling rivalry with her older brother Dan that brought out her competitive nature to the point where she became under 15 world champion at the age of 12. When I was really young, I, like six or seven, I was living in Nottingham and my brother would go out on the lake but I really wasn't interested and I would sit in the park with my friends and eat sweets. <laughs> and then we moved to Christchurch um, and that's when I really got into it. And like my mum taught me and my brother and I saw Dan, who's my older brother, like planing through the water and I just wanted to do that. And after that, I think I was on a mission always to be faster than him and better than him. And yeah, like, I think it just went from there really. I think he's to blame for all of this. Um, I knew she was quite good, but I don't think I realised until I was actually quite old. Like, I started going to some international competitions and then actually the people she raced against were the parents of the people I was racing against. And then you work out she's actually pretty good and maybe you should listen. I fell in love with karate when I was three years old. And when I was a kid, I always um, wanted to be like my brother and when he start to do in karate I also coming to my parents and say I won't go to karate <laughs> and my mom was shocked because I was so small for that but she support my um, desire and I started to doing karate at three years old 
So I want to say just thanks to my family and my brother especially. Love you for that. <laughs> when I was too young in this age, uh, no more girls are practice karate. So I'll time fighting with the boys. <laughs> and I remember a nice story when I was small and maybe five years old. I was on the podium with a gold medal and two boys are beside me and they're crying <laughs> because the girls uh, <laughs> kick them. Loss of form and injuries are a part of any athlete's life. It can destroy careers, but suffering disappointment can also make sportsmen and women stronger, give them the desire to bounce back and prove the doubters wrong. There'll be many life-affirming stories in Tokyo of athletes who've defied the odds to reach their own Olympic peak. Skateboarding was for so long outside the Olympic ropes. For some in the sport, competing for medals goes against their philosophy, but the rewards are now rich for those with elite status. And there's some times when I don't want to skate, but I skate, <laughs> you know, and, and there are some times when I compete and I'm really nervous and I wish I could just escape, <laughs> but I still compete, you know, because that's the feeling it's not always comfortable, you know, like competition. It's like when, when I win, I feel great. <laughs> and when I lose, I don't, you know, and then I say like, why am I doing this to myself? But, but then, you know, I do it all over again because there must be some part of me that really wants that. When I was just starting out, uh, trying to work out if I wanted to go full-time windsurfing or not, it was in 2015 and I went to the World Championships. It was actually pretty fast, like in training, and it was in Oman, light wind venue, really hot, and I got absolutely smoked, like <laughs> probably five from the back. I was so upset in the evenings, and my mum was like, well, why are you doing it? Why are you putting yourself through it? Like, you don't need to do it. You just go back to school and, like, be a normal kid. <laughs> There's something inside me that just really, really wanted to do it, and then I went home, spoke to my coach, and we set out a plan of how I can make the jump. I think that was a real lesson in how you come back, how you reset. That was the hardest, but also the most important step, I think, in my career. It feels so amazing and so ready and so confident, and you know, the ocean can throw you a curveball, and it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. I think just knowing that kind of is what keeps you going every single day, and that's what makes winning that much sweeter, and so many things are out of your control, so if I lose or have a bad moment or, or whatever, I just try to learn from it and get that much better for the next time I paddle out. So. The billions of people who'll watch these elite athletes at the Tokyo Olympics will see them very much with their game faces on. It's how sportsmen and women prepare for the biggest moments of their lives. They have to shut off all the external factors to achieve their goals. But athletes are human beings with social lives, families, worries, and great joy away from their own sporting arena. So what makes these athletes tick? For Caroline Marks, aiming to be the world's best is a way of thanking her family for their sacrifices. I feel like my family plays a huge role in, like, obviously my whole life, but, it's, you know, really in my career. I think they made a huge sacrifice moving from Florida to California and um, just to get me better waves and for me to be closer to Hawaii and um, closer to where my coach is and things like that. So they've made a huge sacrifice. And, you know, I started surfing because of my brothers, so I kind of feel like I owe everything to my family. And they motivate me so much. I want to be the best because I, and they're also my biggest supporters. So it's really fun. I love my family so much. Not many Olympians can say they've had their own art exhibited. Alexis Sablone's talent led her to a commission from a major European city. I make sculptures in a, I have a studio space. Summer before last, I made a, like a large scale skatable sculpture in Malmo in Sweden. It's in a public square in, in Malmo and it's um, open for, to the skaters for them to use, but it's also just can be shared by you know all, all different user groups and was, so that was a really cool project. Sharing your life on camera with the world can have two sides, the reflected glory of success, the introspection of defeat. Irina Zaretska's YouTube videos play an important role in her life. <laughs> this video are helping me to uh, alive this emotion because when I lose, I'm too sad, I'm too angry to everyone and but when my team coming to with me to me with the camera, I'm start to be a little bit softy. <laughs> I need to analyze it quicker because I need to wreck it <laughs> for the uh, for the video. 
but it's our life it's uh, part of our road so if i lost i lost and i sharing with it but when i won i also sharing a lot <laughs> the olympic delay and national lockdowns were tough for all athletes for emma wilson it was a chance to take a break from the constant traveling and reflect closer to home last summer when i was stuck in england a lot of kids we invited them to come and train with me and Actually, they were pushing me hard, so it ended up being really good training as well as just speaking to them a bit and letting them know like what it's like to be an athlete trying to go to the Olympics. And I mean, when I was that age, if someone, if someone had said to me, come and join in a training session, I would have been like, oh my God, what's, <laughs> what's going on? So if I can inspire some young kids here and to get out on the windsurfer and just enjoy it, have a smile on their face, I think that's my goal. I mean, it is serious, but you can enjoy it and you can have a smile on your face and that's what I like to show. The coronavirus pandemic forced athletes to put their dreams on hold for 12 months. With the Tokyo Games now almost upon us, these athletes will be fine-tuning their bodies and their minds as they look ahead to what they hope will be a career-defining fortnight in Japan. Four athletes out of the 11,000 will descend upon the Olympic Village and venues with hopes high, emotions ready to explode once their moment comes. I hope that one time I can be there and can get this Olympic medal, an Olympic title. And I know many athletes, I talk with them and they have an insane emotion. <laughs> they cannot describe his, uh, his feelings. So I'm very happy that sometimes I can feel this emotion too. I think it's taken a few years actually, like my whole career to try and just keep learning every single day. More like accepting the conditions rather than wishing it was I don't know, 20 knots instead of 10 knots, you just accept, okay, today it's going to be like this, that what can I do to be the best? It doesn't feel like a job, regardless if it's my job or not, you know, I, I wake up every day and that's all I want to do is surf, and that's all I think about. Wake up in the morning, think about surfing, go to bed, think about surfing, so do whatever makes you happy and um, just grab a friend and go out there and, and enjoy it. Skateboarding's always going to be a part of my life, one way or another. Even when you're old, it makes you feel young. It's just so nostalgic. It's like, this is the same thing I've been doing since I was 10 years old. I can't imagine like my life without it because it's just so woven in there, you know? Since Tokyo last hosted the Olympics in 1964, the world has changed beyond recognition. But in the sporting arena, an Olympic gold medal still holds the highest acclaim. The moment is almost upon us. Tokyo will reveal new global superstars and bring us the new faces of the Games.